Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. Late night shoppers have been left stunned as a man was stabbed outside a busy supermarket entrance in Launceston. He remains in a serious condition in hospital. Police are reassuring the public that it is still safe to be out and about despite concerns about worsening youth crime. A frightening moment for late night shoppers. It was dark, sirens, people talking, people everywhere asking questions. It was really just all over the place. Emergency services swarming the coals at Racecourse Crescent in Launceston. Following reports, a 50-year-old man was stabbed by a group of youths who had climbed onto the roof of the complex. There was an altercation on the roof of the plaza, resulting in the 50-year-old victim being stabbed multiple times. Shoppers left stunned by what was happening in front of them. I was just inside Kmart with my little sister doing a bit of shopping until I got the phone call. Obviously, I'm freaking out, thinking, what's going on? Is my sister okay? Is my mum okay? Two youths aged 15 and 16 were taken into custody early this morning. A third youth, also aged 16, arrested just before noon. Police still looking for a fourth. Youth crime again at the forefront of concern, with the most recent figures available showing a 40% rise in youths being charged. And what is worrying, of course, uh, any crime at all, uh, and that is why we're focused on ensuring that we're delivering more uh, police on the beat. Tasmania is a very safe place, but unfortunately these incidents do occur, which is why police do what we do. The man underwent surgery today and remains in a serious but stable condition. Mark Zeta, 7 Tasmanian News. Disgraced greyhound trainer Anthony Bullock is reportedly appealing the lifetime ban he received just yesterday. The Office of Racing Integrity disqualified Bullock from owning, training or nominating a racing greyhound after a Paddy Mellon tail law was found on his property. Premier Rockcliffe says animal cruelty is abhorrent and anyone engaging in that behaviour needs to face the full brunt of the law. He has a right to appeal uh, and um, we respect that right, but certainly I think for any Tasmanian that um, loves and uh, respects the, um, the, the rights of animals and uh, their well-being and their humane treatment, um, this has been a very disturbing case. The West Tamer Council has also revoked Bullock's kennel licence after an investigation found non-compliant conditions. The Greens are calling on Tasmanians to read for themselves some of the 57 public submissions to the ambulance ramping inquiry which has just been made public. The East Coast resident that saw three sunrises from the waiting room of the Launceston General Hospital, the 93 year old who broke her pelvis and waited almost 12 hours to be admitted uh, and indeed um, the stories of health professionals, uh, paramedics themselves. This report, which is due to be handed down in March next year, will include recommendations to improve transfer delays at hospitals. Meanwhile, State Labor is calling for paramedics on short-term contracts to be provided with permanent positions. If you're a worker in a fixed-term position and you can find a full-time job in another jurisdiction, you go to that jurisdiction for that full-time job and that's what we're seeing time and time again. We've, of course, put on an additional 220 uh, paramedics and dispatch officers since coming to government and indeed uh, last budget uh, made 97 uh, paramedics uh, full-time. A report commissioned by Ambulance Tasmania recommends employing an additional 126 paramedics by 2031-32. Thousands have spent the day spinning on rides and spending big on show bags as the Royal Hobart show got underway. Light rain didn't deter patrons, with the annual event expecting a record number of visitors over its three days. Crowds packing in as day one of the Royal Hobart show kicks off. Went on tea cuts ride with my little brother. It's my first time to the show. The boys have come once before, so we're excited to see what's out and about. People's Day saw the grounds filled with food, rides, show bags and everything in between. We've got several different entertainment things at the regatta grounds. So we've got the Outback Stockman show, the racing pigs, the jet packs on the water, as well as the motorbike trick show. Um, I've been on, been on the G-Wizard, um, some other scary ones. Animals of all shapes and sizes proving a major attraction. Some a little more creepy than others. 
our native snakes, our, our venomous snakes, uh, but also have some animals here that kids can have a hold of. The event, now more than 200 years old, plays an important role in bringing Tasmanians together. It, it brings agriculture into the city. Most people in the city wouldn't have seen animals like they see at the show before. The show is hoping to attract around 40,000 people over the next three days. But take my word for it, some rides like this one are not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> what do we reckon? How was that? Oh, sick, mate. Oh, it, was, it was awesome. The excitement doesn't stop there. The event runs until Saturday evening. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Prices for Hobart homes have grown three times faster than they did last quarter, according to the latest property report from Domain. The median cost of a home in Hobart now sits at more than $700,000. Despite the rise, the pace of growth was nearly 2% lower than the historical average. Meanwhile, unit prices dropped 4.8, sorry, 8.4%, the steepest annual fall in around a decade. Tasmania's regional tourism operators have been given a much-needed boost. Government data shows the state welcomed more than a million visitors in the past financial year, with tourists injecting $3.8 billion into the local economy, driving jobs growth. We've made jobs, we've made a place for people that can come and, and enjoy themselves and spend time and catch up with friends. That is significant when you consider that um, $700 million also the hospitality sector puts into uh, the Tasmanian economy. The state is home to more than 2,000 hospitality businesses. A colourful convoy has completed this year's Taz Bash after six days touring the state, making plenty of noise as they travelled from town to town, raising money and awareness for children's charity, Variety. You can hear them long before you see them. After 1,200 kilometres, this ragtag bunch crossed the finish line in Hobart in a haze of smoke and bubbles. It, it's great to see the kids love it. What's the fuel economy like? It doesn't look very aerodynamic. Uh, the only thing it won't pass is a service station on the highway. <laughs> Along highways and creek crossings, it would have been hard to miss these characters. We travel the state, we see different parts of the state that we've never seen before and... Um, and with the, the group of people that we're with, it's just fantastic. Mechanical reliability isn't high on the list of priorities when selecting a vehicle. 11 of them started this year's bash, only eight finished. One only making it 30 kilometres before breaking down. But it's not crossing the finish line that's important, rather it's raising money. This year's bash is collecting more than $200,000, which will fund the work Variety does brightening the lives of sick and disadvantaged kids. It's been a magnificent year, uh, despite all the hardship that um, many businesses and families are going through, but to have such amazing and generous people joining us uh, fundraising throughout the year uh, has been really, really humbling. One team who call themselves the Beach Boys raising $50,000 and they say they'll do it again next year. Variety puts the fun in fundraising and we have fun raising. <laughs> Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. A century from former Test player Joe Burns has helped Queensland frustrate Tasmania on day one of their Sheffield Shield clash at Blunston Arena. The Bulls slumped to two for ten, but for a 187-run partnership between Burns and Jack Clayton put the visitors in control. It's not often cricket is played near snow, but these are the conditions Tasmania and Queensland faced. Bowling first, the Tigers scored some early rewards. Oh, an edge and taken! Gabe Bell removing street for three. Fellow opener Matt Renshaw also gone soon after. Oh, a nick and a catch is taken. Caleb Jewell down low. Runs hard to come by early for Queensland, their first boundary taking 20 overs to find. Joe Burns and Jack Clayton able to stabilise the innings by lunch. Full delivery driven with some power from Joe Burns. The Bulls finding runs a lot easier to make after the break. Clayton and Burns both made 50, their partnership also going past 100. A thickish drive, 
plenty of bat on it, however. The Dewars counter-attacked, turning the game back in the Bulls' favour, as the Tigers struggled to make inroads. It was a trying middle session for Tasmania, the home side unable to make a breakthrough. Clayton reached 96 before an errant shot cost him a century. Oh, and he spoons one to mid on, you wouldn't believe it. Michael Nisa got a life on three, dropped its slip. Joe Burns was stoic for Queensland, the former Australian opener bringing up a century off 212 balls. There is a misfield, and there's a 100 for Joe Burns. The Tigers with work to do tomorrow. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. The Hurricanes shot at WBBL redemption has been dashed and they have 18-year-old Perth sensation Chloe Ainsworth to blame. In just her third Big Bash match, the Scorchers' teenage quick is the league's leading wicket-taker after claiming three for just 25 plus a fourth in the field. The Hurricanes' top order going relatively cheaply, all round and Naomi Stalenberg redeeming things late with a half-century. The Scorchers, however, having no struggle matching the 168-run target, things won't get any easier easier for the Canes either, facing the Strikers tomorrow. She's only been riding for four years, but Launceston BMX rider Chelsea Tuck is already looking to win her second consecutive national title. The young para-athlete is heading to Victoria to defend her trophy, proving her rare condition is no impediment on the track, but her skills aren't confined to the bike. I play boxing. Yep. And then I play, um, I'm playing archery and yep. some rowing. Yep. The national titles kick off in Shepparton on Monday. Smithton basketballer Jacob Furphy is across the ditch right now, representing Australia in 3x3 basketball. The Gangaroos are currently down two games to one against the Kiwis, with one more to be played tonight, giving them the chance to level out the series. Good evening. We experienced mainly light showers about the west and south, which eased throughout the day, although it was mostly sunny about the north. Today, Hobart reached 14, as expected. Launceston and Devonport both 18. Burnie, 16 degrees. Across the states, St Helens also 18. Lowhead, 17. Friendly Beaches, 16. The Islands and Ooze all 15. Strawn, 14. Mariah Island, 13. Luncheon Hill and Grove, 12. Our friends at Liawini had another cool day with just 8 degrees. The satellite shows mostly overcast low-level cloud moving from the southwest over the west and far south. A band of mid to high-level cloud with embedded thunderstorms sits over northern New South Wales and southern eastern Queensland. Tomorrow, a high-pressure system sits over Tasmania, extending a ridge over Victoria, SA, southern NT, Queensland and New South Wales. Southeast to southwesterly winds 10 to 20 knots, tending variable 5 to 15 knots during the day. South to Southwesterly winds in the west and south with swells building up to four metres. Tomorrow's forecast for day two of the Royal Hobart Show. Partly cloudy and 17 degrees. Similar conditions in Huonville with 18. Also partly cloudy in Campania, 19. Launceston, partly cloudy, 18. Cloud hanging around in Devonport, 15. Much the same in Georgetown with 17. Burnie, 14. Partly cloudy, mostly sunny in Strawn, 16. Cloudy in Wynyard, 15. More cloud for St Helens and Swansea, both 15. Cloudy also for, uh, in Port Arthur with 17 degrees. Looking now to the three-day forecast, Saturday light showers developing about the north with showers extending statewide with possible thunderstorms about the west. Sunday showers about the west easing in the afternoon, otherwise fine. Monday showers contracting to the west in the evening. Looking further north now tomorrow, mostly sunny in Melbourne, 20. 18 are becoming cloudy in Canberra. Mostly sunny skies in Adelaide, 24 is the top. Darwin chasing a sunny 37 degrees. And as we take a look now at current conditions, it's drizzling in Hobart with 10 degrees, mostly sunny in Launceston, 14, also sunny in 14 in Devonport. Kim, now that show day has kicked off, it's time for us Tasmanians to get back in the garden and start planting those veggies. Get those tomatoes in. Thank you so much, Kai. And that is all your news for now. We leave you tonight with more of the fun from the Hobart Show. Thanks for joining us. Good night.